So this is the uh, last of the uh, live streams we're doing during lockdown as we are easing. It's my pleasure to welcome Chief Executive of the PDC, Mr. Matthew Porter. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Matt. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Looking good? Yeah, I like um, the wall display. Yeah, well, um, you might not know this, but I, I managed that all. So, oh, do you? Um, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I do you? My we've got, we've used got, to hang around at events when we used to put events on. Do you remember all that? Yeah, yeah I remember all that. I remember queuing up at, at, I remember queuing up outside that people don't know. <laughs> uh, that, new, there you go. Are you back? Um, seems some struggling here, Matt. It's like the home tour all over again. Oh, it is. It's like Pete Wright. Let me uh, let me <laughs> kick you out and come back in again if that's okay. Okay, mate. Well, let me kick. There we go. So as we're waiting for Matt, there we'll. Uh, Obviously, talk about the summer series is approaching next week. We've got all our players in action. James Wilson, Daryl Gurney, Evander Pass, Harry Ward, Jamie Hughes, Vincent Mandemir and Carol Sedlicek and Big Willie Borland will be trying. And we've actually got Matt Porter back. That's great. Is that, is that Matt, Matt, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friends, brilliant. Okay, so um, how have you been uh, coping with the last four months of, of lockdown? It's been different, hasn't it? You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely the longest I've, I'd say I've ever been in my adult life without getting on an aeroplane or checking into a hotel. You know, it's been a, it, for those of us that are fortunate enough to spend our, our lives, you know, travelling around the world with the darts, it's been a, a real challenge. But there's been some good sides as well. It's been nice to spend a little bit more time, with, you know, at home with the family and stuff like that. So um, not all bad. And, and we've managed to keep working because of the wonders of technology. Yeah, you spoke about that. I've got a young son as well. As I know yours is, is slightly older, but it, it is nice to see him anytime you want to see him, isn't it? It's like without, you know, oh, can I come after the flight or I'll spend a couple yeah. of hours here before you go again? I know you're you're a lot busier than me, but I know mm. it is on my level, so God knows what it's like for you. No, it's been, it's been good, but I have to say, better now I'm able, able to go back to nursery as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um so obviously we had the home tour. Um, we are happy with over a hundred uh, tour card holders taking part. Obviously there was there was uh, there was players that didn't. Out of mind, Dal Gurney didn't take part um, because of setup issues mainly, um, and Benito didn't. But the other six guys did. Um, very yeah, success. I mean, no, it was look look. It wasn't suitable for everybody, and it wasn't convenient for everybody. But we were pleased that the majority were able to play. And the feedback we had was really good. I think a few of the guys sort of were, were, were pleased how motivated and, and able to, to focus on their practice for it they were. You know, perhaps initially they thought it was just a bit of a mess around, a bit of fun, but, but they, they got into it. And you could see that by the latter stages, those that qualified for the second phase really started taking it seriously. And, you know, Nathan was, was delighted to win it, but there was a lot of other players who took a lot out of it as well. Um, yeah, uh, I mean... The first few uh, nights, as we just spoke about there briefly, were, were very difficult. Peter Wright's Wi-Fi was yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible, is the word I'd use for it. Um, 
after the first couple of nights, I think I think it become a, a good watch. I mean, the first the first couple, I think you'd agree, weren't hard yeah, was, to adapt to the technology. Yeah. No, listen, it was it was a challenge. You know, anything new you do in the technological uh, world it can can be a challenge, and it was a learning curve and one that everybody took to with with plenty of enthusiasm and dedication. Even if, as you say, in the first couple of nights, some of the results weren't great. You know, we we did suffer with some players' Wi-Fi and. And also we had, you know, we had that attack on the first night, which is just, you know, people think that sort of thing's funny and, and whatever. But, um, you know, that affected the logging. But actually, as you say, by sort of halfway through the first week of, of night four, of the full 43 weeks, 43 nights rather, it became very good. And, and to be honest with you, the real star of the show is Dan Dawson for holding the whole thing together for 43 nights uh, and managing to, um, to, to be as excited on the last night as he was on the first. Yeah, I mean, I've just had 20 seconds there of the technical delays in front of probably 100 odd people, and that was like um, panicking. So he, he had to yeah. cope with, uh, I think, Matt Clark's internet went down when he played Harry. They had to restart the game. Uh, Keegan Brown's had to be excluded for a night. But to what the last, the last 80% of it was was really good watching. Uh, I, I watched a few, mainly when my guys are playing, but I watched a few of the, the latter yeah. stages in the final group and just good to see sport. Obviously, sport's coming back now more and more. So you, you forget at the time, darts was the only sport being broadcast at that time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, although I think you could still watch Belarusian second division football if you were that bothered. But yeah, it was um, mm. it was good to be able to, as I say, give the guys something to focus on and and give the fans something to remind them that darts is still around and and still able to be entertaining. You know, Luke Woodhouse got a nine darter. You know, first person mm. to get a professional nine darter in their own kitchen. You know, good for him. So, um, you know, a few people had their fifteen minutes of fame and and yeah, as I say, it gave everybody something to focus on. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, the upcoming challenges that you've had to face with yeah. the PC and the brief that you sent out last week, which I won't go into in depth, uh, but I do. <laughs> it must have been an absolute nightmare to be able to get these over the line. I mean, just, just touch on how hard it was yeah. to even get the next five events played I, I and, and the challenges. The other day, I was saying to someone the other day, we've put events on in Shanghai, Tokyo, Johannesburg, Singapore, outposts of Australia, wherever. But unquestionably, the Summer Series has been the hardest event we've, we've ever had to arrange. The, the, the challenges we've faced and the amount of hoops we've had to jump through and regulations we've had to follow. And it's all right. No, no, you know, no issue with, with doing any of it at all. But it's just been really, really um, and onerous. And, and obviously a lot of responsibility as well because the pressure's on us to get this right for the players. You know, as much as they're chomping at the bit to come back and play competitively at the Ockney, they want to do so in a safe environment. So it's up to us to make sure that, that we can we can produce that. And we're confident that with the protocols we've put in place, we will be able to. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously I've got guys coming from Czechoslovakia, Holland, uh, Northern Ireland, uh, Scotland and other people as well coming as far as Australia. Um, what What... What's the uptake? Obviously, the the, the, the entries close. I know it's, it's yeah. close to a, a full quota, so it's gonna, obviously yeah. there's going to be a few people that can't make it. With we, the we've, had, we've had 108. We've had 108 tour card holders enter so far, and then we've got about 22 and a half hours left to enter. Those that haven't, some of the guys who haven't entered have already booked their hotels, so they're obviously going to get round to it. Um, we yeah. think it'll be tough for the Aussie lads to get back. Damon Hitcher and Tyler Anderson. That might be a step too far. Um, Jeff Smith and Kai Fan Lung, the other two tour card holders who are long haul distance away, shall we say, they're expecting to be there. Um, and then, you know, there might be a couple of the European lads who've got work commitments or, or are reluctant to travel. But if I was to put an, a figure on it, I would say 120, maybe 122 of the tour card holders will play. And then we'll go down the usual route of, of the Challenge Tour top up players. Because Scott Mitchell's put on Twitter that he's playing, so I'm guessing yeah. he, he was told that somebody wasn't entering. So, yeah, I mean Scott's Scott's top of the uh, top of the list, if you like, of the of the of the reserve players. So he's um you know he's pretty much always going to get in, um and and yeah he's in uh, he's, he's in he's, he's been entered. Cool. Um, the one thing that came out last week was the rankings decision to mm. take off the money. 
and not do it a week earlier. So Jamie Hughes had 25 grand from Prague. I think he should have done it like that, personally. But what was the decision to um, to take the money off? Um, obviously, there's no right or wrong at the moment. No, but... that's the thing. You're never going to find something that's going to work for everybody and please everybody. You have to kind of accept that when you're starting to put these, these sort of uh, procedures in place. So you have to try and be as fair and as transparent as possible. And try to do so with the minimum amount of disruption. You know, we, we, we didn't want to have to rewrite the rule book for the sake of, of three months, if you like. And that we fell, obviously, we fell behind on European tour events that won't be rearranged. So the, it's not as if you could hold money over or say that that was for later in the year when those events be played because it's just not, not going to happen. Um, but the, the, the Players' Championship events, essentially, five of the ten events that we were short, we will catch up through the summer series. So... Actually, what you're looking at is a loss of five players' championship events. And we took a view that there were still eight played before the lockdown. And there'll still be these five in the summer series, which is 13 events. So there's still plenty of opportunities for players to earn money and qualify for the world match play. And we didn't want to have to, as I say, rewrite the rule book for short-term short -term, uh, solutions. And we involved the PDPA at all levels. Uh, Alan Warren Little and Andy Scott were involved every stage of the way, reporting back into Peter Manley. So the players were, were represented through those voices. And in the end, it was a, a you know a joint decision that this was the fairest way. I think if it had been a six, nine, 12 month period, you know, we might have had to look at alternatives. But for three months where we were able to replace five of the events through the summer series, um, this, this came out as being the right answer. And obviously, Milks in Keynes is is a perfect venue with, um, I mean, inverted commas, the bubble, with the fact that there's a hotel on site and the venue connected yeah. to the hotel. Was that the only venue that you that you looked at? I know Snooker's used it for two yeah, tournaments no, so it, far. It was, to be fair, and it was it was it was set up for us before Snooker, but it just so happened that ITV wanted Snooker on those dates, so they went in first. But yeah, Milton Keynes was the, was the first, and and in, because of its suitability, both of location and facilities, it was the only choice to consider. Yeah, we're gonna. Well, there's a there's a question here from Charlie Gray that you, you probably get asked a lot. But he's asked, do you think there'll be a Q school? I suppose it's still up in the air, really, with 600 well, people in a room. I, I, I would say yes. You know, at the moment we're not, as, as we've said throughout this whole process, we're not making predictions for anything that is uh, more than eight, ten weeks in advance. You know, six, eight, ten weeks in advance. So we're certainly not ruling out Q school in early 2021, and our intention would be to stage one. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Obviously, you don't, you, you don't, you don't know. You, you, you're governed by the government uh, and the guidelines, obviously. So it's at the end of the day, you, your people are asking me the same questions I'm asking you, and I'll give them the yeah. same answers. So yeah. I, it's like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How are you supposed yeah. to know until? Um, obviously, the, the last the last time that we spoke was at Liverpool Premier League just after the UK Open, hmm. and I think that was the the day when it came apparent that something was, was wrong, really. Obviously, at the yeah. Pro Tours two days later. And I've heard this question asked a lot, but if somebody said to you, no darts until July the 8th, um, I'm guessing you'd have laughed your head up at it. I mean, nobody took yeah. it seriously, really, until that no, week, I mean, was it? It was it's just... Yeah, if you think back to Liverpool Premier League and the UK Open, we were sort of joking, all oh, don't shake hands with each other. You know, it was, it was kind of... <laughs> That's a joking to lift it too far, but nobody thought it was going to be like this, did they? They just thought it would pass over. And um, yeah, it's been a, a, a real eye opener and hopefully one that we never have to go through again. No, and um, talking about the Premier League, obviously we're about six weeks into it. Um, at what point do you make the decision to, to play them behind closed doors? Because obviously, with it being a season, you've got to get. Next year will be starting in in February or being yeah. well. So there's only a, there's only a short space of time with the dates being taken up as we eat into the the year. Yeah, we, we we won't go beyond the end of October because we um, we have you know we've got next year's event ready to start in February. So we won't go beyond the end of October. It's pointless doing Premier League November December January and starting again in February. It'll just confuse everybody and. Uh, you know, it just, just won't make sense. So if we can't schedule it on the date that we want to do so with a the crowd, then we'll look to do so behind closed doors, which, you know, I think I've been quoted as saying the Premier League doesn't work behind closed doors. And probably back in March, when you ask, when people ask me that, I didn't think it did. But we're in a different world now and maybe we have no choice. That's right. It's Dillian White and uh, 
Povetkin are going to fight behind closed doors. I'm sure that that you know darts will have to uh, just adhere to the rules, won't they? That's, well, that's just the thing. life. It's, you know, it, just, it becomes a necessity, doesn't it? Really, it's it's you know it's yeah. unfortunately the scenario that we're all we're all in. Um, Adam asked a question here. Obviously, with the BDO uh, announcing uh, going into liquidation this week, um, will they? If the Grand Slam does indeed take place, will the BDO players be present? If there is no organisation there, um, what's the script of that, in your opinion, at the moment, at this early stage? Well, I think it is quite early, but also, you know, I think it's important that any player who plays in the Grand Slam has got credibility for how they've qualified for doing so. Um, you know, clearly the BDO has been going through a difficult period over the last few months or so, um, but we need to wait and see. Obviously, they've got Wayne Wong, they've got Makuru Suzuki, but what, who, what sort of champions, if you like, do they have when the, when the Grand Slam comes about? So we'll, we'll take a view on that. I don't know if they're intending to stage any events over the next few months. Probably not in light of, of COVID. Um, so, you know, I think it's important, as I say, to uphold the credibility of the, of the Grand Slam by having players in it who, who deserve to be there. Um, but there's, there seems to be something of a land grab going on in, in the, the amateur darts world at the moment. Some new faces appearing, there's some rebranded faces appearing. Um, and obviously, one of those organisations will probably come through the strongest, whether it's the WDF, BDO, UK Darts Association, Tri Nations, MAD, Steve Brown's new organisation. You know, everybody seems to be fighting for that space. Um, so we, we'll, we'll watch that with interest. Yeah, I saw them, that uh, Mad Darts. Has that got any affiliation with the PDC or is it a completely independent no, organisation? I mean, it's, it's Steve Brown, who obviously we're affiliated with through the JDC, but it's a different organisation. So, no, there's, there's, we have no affiliation with any amateur darts organisation. Um, this has been a four-month break. and uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, Suns article today. I, don't, I think it was a, a, a bit of a non-event, non-article, really. It didn't need to be reported on, but... Uh, Merv King has uh, has been mm. working for Amazon, which I think it should have been commended rather than the article was written in such a way it was uh, should be a shame yeah, for working and earning money. Yeah, I mean, classic, he's a dark, classic, he's... classic son, fill up some column inches with something. I thought Mervyn's comment was spot on. His quote was, I, I don't see how this is news, and, and I don't either. He's a bloke who's denied the opportunity to do his day job. So he's got off his backside and gone and got himself another job. Well, how anybody can poke fun or be critical of that, I do not know. You know, he's performing a service that people will be appreciative of getting their delivery. So, fair play to Mervyn and, you know, really the son, you know, well, I say you should know better, but should they? You know what they're like. So, just disappointing lazy journalism, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Merv is, um, I've known Merv 15 years and, you know, you have to know him really to to, to know what he's like and they probably pick the worst, probably pick the worst player to report on. Well, you gave him a especially for, yeah. you know, he said, well, why is it news? I'm delivering some parcels. Who no. cares? You know, he, he probably doesn't yeah. care. He's just driving around delivering parcels, getting paid, you know, good luck. Yeah. Um, Gonna, we're going to finish up with a bit of a story about you, Matt, because um, you took over from Tim Darby in 08, I think, Long to be chief ago. executive. Yeah. yeah, 12 years overseeing. And, and I started uh, doing my uh, exhibitions and being involved in darts around 07. So okay. sort of like could over. you've obviously seen loads more than me, but oversaw the the rise of what's happened in the last 12 years and, and how it's gone from a, a game – to a, a nationwide sport. I mean, what's what was the biggest um, the biggest change that you saw that sort of like kickstarted the the rise of darts? Um, the, the, obviously, the Barney one, coming over. Yeah, Barney coming over was big. I think bigger than that was when we started to do arenas for Premier League nights. I think Sheffield was the first. Manchester may have been one of the early ones as well. And, Not and Nottingham kind of, was. Nottingham, yeah, yeah. That really set a you know that really set a, a sent a message out that it was a big time sport. And then the snowball effect. Then next thing you know, you're at Rotterdam, Berlin, and the O2 with ten thousand plus crowds. So that really helped. Um, and I think as well for me, it was just the fact that it, it's no longer a British sport. It's now a global sport. You know, that's essential for the for the development. You know, players like Daryl, they need a global profile, not just a British profile. Uh, and the guys who, you know, are, are aspiring to be in his place. So I think the, the World Series has helped on that front, the European tour, the affiliate tours we have in different areas, which give players from those regions regular competitive action. 
just generally, the British players have always had the opportunity to play competitive darts if they want to do so at a high level. That opportunity has always been there. And now global players have that opportunity as well. And, and I think, you know, that's the only way really that the sport can ever truly go and, and rival things like tennis and golf as, as global tours. And um, what's been your favourite moment, the 12 years that you've been uh, chief executive? What, what's been the standout moment for you where it sort of sticks in the back of your mind and you think, yeah, happy it's days, that was a great night? Yeah, it's not so much. I mean, we've had loads of great nights, you know, as you, as you, as you all know, you'll have been at many of them. But for me, it's the same day every year. It's the first time I walk into Alexandra Palace when it's all set out and ready for the event and it's pristine you know everything's in the, the chairs are all in perfect order the carpet's untouched on the stage it's it you know it's just it's just a, a real mecca it's the cathedral of the sport and that for me you know the hair stands on the back of my neck every time i walk into ali pali that one that once a year I, I i love that day and i obviously i love that event but just doing that every year to walk in there and see that is is brilliant for me, it's a bit biased. The best was the uh, 2018 Belfast Premier League. I've never yeah, that heard an atmosphere cool. like it. That was that was unbelievable. Um, so, um, well, somebody's asked about the Challenge Tour, which um, I, I can probably think that it, it with with seeing how hard it's been to put the Pro Tour on for 128 players. I'm guessing the Challenge Tours. Uh, the the last of your thoughts really with you with with the pro tour being top of the top of the list. I mean, do you think there'll be a challenge tour development tour this year? I think a lot of it will depend on whether we need to enforce the bubble environment. You know, if we do, then it will be a a, a challenge, no pun intended, um, because of the costs involved um, and the obligations on the players. And don't forget that most players on the challenge and development tour are not full time players. They've got other obligations. They've got other time constraints, travel constraints, you know, so it's not as easy for them as it is for the professionals just to give up their time and go and, you know, isolate themselves in a hotel for, for a period of time. So I think a lot of it will depend on that. Our intention is very much to stage additional challenge and development tour events in some way, shape or form this year. Whether we're able to do that or not will largely depend on the testing requirements, social distancing, things like that. If we can get back to the point and the same would apply to the Pro Tour here. If we can get back to the point where you can turn up at Barnsley, Wigan, Milton Keynes, wherever we do these events, on the on the Saturday morning, you can play, you can go back to your hotel or go home, come back again the next day, do it again. Once we get back to that point, then everything will become a lot, lot easier. But while we are in a position like we have with the Summer Series where we need to maintain a bubble environment, which means a, a huge expense on testing, you know, the, the people may not know this, but the PDC are, are obviously stumping up the costs of all the testing for the players and the, and the first night's accommodation for them all as well, because clearly we're asking them to get there a day early to be tested. It's a huge expense for us, that. And one we're happy to go through because we want to get the, 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 the guys and girls back on the hockey. But it's not necessarily practical at challenge and development tour level for, for numerous reasons. So we, we've got to wait and see how that transpires over the, over the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, I mean, um, we obviously you get 300 players for a challenge tour, so that's like testing 300 people, yeah, putting them yeah. in the bubble. And, and, and not only that, you know, you, you're tested and then you have to go in your hotel room for 12 hours while you wait for your result. You know, that's, that's one thing. It's not yeah. just a case of saying, right, get tested, walk in, start playing. Get tested and go and lock yourself up for half a day. Well, for part-time players, the, the appetite to do that is probably not as high as it is for the full-time pros. Is there a, 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 a test that will be quicker? Are they, are they working on a, a, a sort of like an hour test turnaround? Do you, you not know? No. You tell me. I mean, look, when, when we – I must have spoken to 50 testing companies. You know, when we first started going through this, the test was several hundred pounds each, and it took 24 hours to get a result. You know, the test that we're doing for the summer series is still, still hundreds of pounds, and still – but, the, but the, the turnaround time is – uh, 12 hours. I said 10, it would be optimistic, but we, we're allowing 12 hours. Um, you know, there are tests out there that give you a result in three hours. Are they as reliable? Does the machine work as often? Can the machine process as many tests as it needs to if we're testing 200 people on a day? What's the cost per test? You know, there's, there's so many things, and they have to go through this process over here to get approval, regulatory approval, kite marks, and to be in hotels, all sorts of things like that. 
and in an ideal world, some sort of breathalyzer or saliva test or blood test that gave you an instant result, what they call a near patient result, i.e. not having to send the, the, the sample off to a laboratory, that would really help. But it takes a while for these tests to get approval. They're not just going to approve them because they're available, because obviously, you know, people's health depends on them. So they take a while to get approved. And, and you know, we won't know that for a, for a good while yet. OK, last question before we let you go, Matt. We appreciate the half hour you've given us. No uh, one of the one of the markers, John Chile Reyes, says, how will the match play stage set up be? even with or without crowds, will it be like the German Super League set up with the lollipop man and, and the and the big area that you can't go into, the added exclusion zone? Yeah. We'll see. So we, we, we will have a throw-in zone and we, will have two, and we will have two drinks tables, one per player, but we won't have a stop-go, man. No. Sorry, everyone. So, I know he became a bit of a star on social media, the stop-go, man, but we won't, we won't have a stop-go, man. Obviously, with it, with the play on the same board as well, I'm guessing the board gets clean and things like that, and, and everything yeah. things yeah, that the, you the, never the, thought the, you'd have to do in a darts event. <laughs> well, no, the, the dart connector, my pad will be sanitized after every match. The, you know, the board will be wiped down, changed more frequently, all those sort of things. Okay, well, Matt, well, thank you. Give us half an hour of your time. We're going to say bye bye now. Thanks for for, for asking uh, answering some of the questions we've we've yeah, we've welcome, been Matt. sent in today, and I really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you uh, at the match play, wherever that may be. Okay, take care, mate. See you soon. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. So that was Matt Porter there joining us from his house, uh, giving his details about the upcoming summer series. Um, like I say, our players are going to be uh, participating in all eight. Maybe a couple of Challenge Tour players, Carl McKinstry, Nathan Rafferty, up at the top end of the order may, may get the call to play, which is what we want. But we're going to finish off by playing our lit promo and hopefully um, we'll see you at Blackpool and hopefully there'll be crowds, but we'll wait for an announcement. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>